Hi guys and welcome back to another video presentation and um, thank you all for subscribing, liking my videos, following my channel, uh, it really means a lot and also um, thank you for donations, purchases etc. So it all helps, it all helps to uh, um, keep me motivated. So, lots of queries about, so today is, uh, well, lots of queries about keypads and smart keypads and looking at ways of having unique codes for different people and having to set different timings for different applications and of course, uh, disabling codes as well. So, um, here we have this is what I found. This was actually one of the was it highlighted in my wholesalers, and what it is is um, a keypad, smart keypad. It's a nice little glass touch panel, which I will show you um, on the other video, so uh, then you can see it properly. But it does look like it is it is a glass touch panel, and it's literally what 122 centimeters millimeters. So it's not too bad a design. And the one I've actually got is uh, black background glass. These would cost um, in the UK approximately 120 pounds. And uh, so it depends on whether you're willing to spend that much. And also it's USB powered. So you charge it with USB, sorry, it's charged with USB, it's got built-in batteries. The batteries do tend to last a while as I've had mine uh, charged up uh, a couple of months ago when I first bought it. And it's currently still got a decent charge. And if I look on here, it doesn't actually give me battery usage uh, report, I mean. So we'll come to that. Um, 12 codes. We can use 12 codes on here and each code is unique and it will give a response back to the home center with that unique code. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to my other camera and we can then have a, a bit of a better look at it and I'm gonna show you how to include this in your um, uh, home centers. All right, so let's switch over now. Okay, so this is the keypad that I was uh, talking about it's the PSK01 made by Filiotech so that's what it looks like on the back it's a compact unit um, this keypad is a as you can see it's uh, let's put it this way a 10 digit display with a lock button and the unlock button now the mode that we're going to be using it in means that the lock button directly doesn't work unfortunately however the we do have with it uh, these little brackets and these mounting brackets is they just get screwed into the wall or wherever you want to put them in using either double-sided tape or the supplied screws and these little hooks can then attach themselves into this little spaces themselves so you can just then you just slide it in like that and it stays on the wall micro usb charging port um, Battery seems to be decent and it only seems to use battery when it's actually transmitting data. As I first, when I first four, bought this, three, two, I charged it at one. And I never now used that it. we've updated the parameters, and it's still retained. And how it's charging. So now see that thinking my that default is now we will have green. A, a decent battery life. It was green before because uh, I've already done it. It will so warn yours. It will also the be green beeps. now. Uh, now, when once we've inputted is, the code, okay. Now, um, it turns blue. Some of the that settings means the code's now been accepted. Two and a response has gone back to include the and exclude. And therefore, All right, we then. have to a include and exclude response. the device when you first so, set this up. Now, I've already done this on mine. Then so we can um, use these codes to the code set, but send. A so what we're going to do to include this keypad scene into your system? Scene, sorry. You press so the, at the moment. Um, I've just put it to debug any key to wake it up. I usually have up to twelve key. codes. Enter your programming code and then you can do whatever else. you want with those. Press uh, enter 
commands. One, you can set and zeros up and things like that. Um, and enter. Turn and then you can see off, this started to flash on. green a little bit. Um, a now, code. I've already added code. Mine. So and all this normally would actually go back carry on the system. Green. And on the change computer, everything online. You on make the, sure you on have the computer these and three all ticked because it's got to be added. So if I put another one and then start adding, once it's done, uh, two beeps. So normally that was a three beeps there accepted. because um, it failed. The reason is we've already added it. So that's how it is. And you would get so one icon. That's the keypad. Appearing Pretty decent, screen, I think. Like that. Um, yeah. Let's see. So uh, I will go through this on the in, system. Um, uh, what we do for alarm? That. That's probably the but primary usage. Once that's there, now the and, default um, on this with multiple is entries. a blue background. People. Now the blue background um, signifies the yep. scene control. So mode. let's go back to the computer now. With scene control mode, it means that whatever button you press individually sends a signal back to the home center. Unfortunately, that's not coded. That is just a, a button action which provides a response. So you could have, say, button one allocated to lights, button two for curtains and drive, etc. Um, so each button from 9 to 10, 11 and 12 can do an action, no coding. So it just really becomes a remote control. However, we don't want to use it for that. We do want to use it for security purposes. So for that, we do have to change the parameters. So... Um, now let's go back to the computer and I'll show you how to update the parameters and also then how to put in the codes. Right, now that you've seen, uh, now that I've included everything in here, which I've already done beforehand anyway, um, we've got to make some parameter changes. Now, as I mentioned earlier, when it's first included, it is included in uh, scene control mode, but we don't want it in scene control mode. We actually want it in um, code mode, user code mode. Okay, so for that, we have to make a couple of changes in the parameters. So we click on the parameters, simple. Click on add parameter, I, um, ID one, so, so unassigned, one byte, value one. Now, when you do that, you will see that the screen turns from blue to green. And I have just noticed here, battery power, 60%, uh, as I've been doing a lot of testing, so it does seem to last a while. Um, so it changes to, the keypad changes from blue to green. Now, if we left it on blue, we can make this keypad work as a standard keypad like I mentioned in the video where you press one it does something press two does something else no security nothing it just acts like a remote and for that you then run a different type of scene but we want to run it in a secure mode okay so once you've put that parameter in hit save and now the keypad is in green mode now what I'm going to do is um, console now here's my console and there's a reason why I'm doing it this way okay uh, I have the scene so first of all let me just go into scenes I've just called it 829 for now and if I open the scene so this is how I've set mine up and um, so we've got the trigger on the left for declarations and then we've got the actions on the right and all you have to do is where it says debug user one that's where you need to input the uh, command that you wish to issue okay and so into these separate sections now the fancy coding for to make it work at certain times that's all part of your scenes so you would actually write that within your scene system and then you would just allocate it to one of these buttons. So you could create things like variables to say that it only works between a certain time frame, put that into a variable and then add that variable to a code here. So if the code is one and a variable says it's time, then do something. So that's not part of this, this, uh, this session. This is just mostly how to get this set up and working. Now what I'm going to do is go back home, click on here, 
Now look at this bottom of the screen where we have the different users. So I'm just gonna press the button to wake it up, type the code in, press enter, and you can see user one. Now this has turned blue like you've seen on the video. I've got to wait till it disappears because it's like a reset. Press the um, unlock button again and then type in the next code. And it's giving me user two. And wait. Press it again. Uh, my third user code that I've installed. And I've got user three. Question now, you want to know how to install user codes. Okay, so go back onto the device click on settings and this time we click on advanced here is where you add your user codes right so at the moment I've got three set up now the pin number is hidden for obvious reasons the label is the user label just for your reference only um, for visual um, it doesn't matter what you put in there the main thing is you've got to remember that user 1 is 1111 user 2 is 2222 because if you think back on the console the output the output is based on the user number okay so when you look at the code you will see that if the user ID is 1 then it's this code that's been entered user id 2 this code has been entered it unfortunately it doesn't use the name on here but to enter a code we just put a, a new code in so if say two three four five and put a label in as i don't know i'm gonna rather than putting a name in i just put two three four five so i can remember what codes i've put in but you would actually put in what they're actually for cleaner alarm on alarm off or whatever hit the plus button it actually beeps twice to say it's been synchronized and that's it so now if I click on here that's set up as user 4 wake it up 2 3 4 5 enter user 4 if it doesn't synchronize straight away, I found that when I first set it up, I had to hit the synchronize button originally when I first set it up. And all you do is just hit synchronize and it'll start synchronizing once again and um, go back in. There we are, see? So that's how you set it up on the pin codes. Now, uh, coming to the scene. It's taken me a few time, a bit of time to actually get this running. So what I've decided on this particular one is to have the scene available uh, as a download on, with a nominal charge of five pounds, and that's just to help reimburse me for the time I've spent uh, in working it all out. Unfortunately, the documentation is very poor on this and uh, it took me a bit of time to actually get all the codes, commands, and parameters set up. So all you have to do, I haven't set this up in the shop yet, um, just go to my website, and so it's Yorkshire Automation, click on the shop, and it'll be in here, probably under the Quick App section. So under the quick maps section and it'll be set up in here um, as a, a keypad scene and then from that all you have to do is just copy the scene copy and uh, download it unzip it and it'll be in a dot lua file which you can open up in vsc if you have a mac and if you have Windows, Notepad++, and then it's just a case of copying the declarations on to the left side and copying the code to the right side. And like I mentioned earlier, um, on the scenes itself. So declarations all on here. Don't forget to change the ID to the ID of the device. And on the right hand side, you've got your actions. And uh, the only thing you need to do is remove where it says Fibaro debug 
uh, keypad, user one, user two, etc., and change that to the scenes that you require. And that's it. Um, that's it for now. So, uh, uh, any questions, as usual, stick it on the comment section and things like that. Um, if you need me to have a quick look at anything else, um, feel free to ask. And if something comes along and uh, I like, and if something comes along that's been asked, I'll I'll get it and get it tested. Okay. Uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit like. And don't forget to hit the all important subscribe and the bell button to be notified of all new videos. Um, and that's it for now, I believe. And uh, I'll speak to you guys soon. Take care. Enjoy the bank holiday. And uh, we'll speak later. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.